How to calculate molar mass in three easy steps. First off, there are many other names for molar mass. They all tell us the mass of one mole of a given compound. The key is to find the atomic mass for elements, and that's right below the element symbols. Think of atomic mass as molar mass for an element. Let's find the molar mass for carbon monoxide. So we go to the periodic table, we find carbon, and we find oxygen, and we see the atomic mass there right below the element symbol. To find the molar mass, we add those two numbers together, and we add the units gram per mole, and we're done. We've found the molar mass. You may have noticed that in the previous example, I rounded to two decimal places. Make sure you know what your teacher requires. Let's do an example, H2O. You can think of H2O as being made up of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. So we can go to the periodic table, find the atomic mass for hydrogen, and then for oxygen, and then we'll add the two hydrogens plus one oxygen to find the molar mass for H2O. But there's a quicker and easier way to do this. We can write the atomic mass for hydrogen and multiply that by two, and then add the atomic mass for oxygen. And that'll give us the molar mass for H2O. Let's try another, NH3. So first, we look up the atomic masses on the periodic table. We have 14.01 for nitrogen and 1.01 for hydrogen. And then we're gonna multiply that hydrogen by three because there's a subscript of three after the H. Once we do that, we add everything up and we have the molar mass for NH3. Pause and try these on your own. So check your work and make sure you included the units grams per mole. Just to mess with you, I included parentheses in the third one. So how do we deal with this when we have parentheses? We'll use the same process as we've been using. So first, I'll write down the atomic mass for each of the elements. And then I'll put the parentheses around the elements just like they show up in the formula. And because I have this two right here, I'm gonna multiply everything by two. Once I do that, I then have 40.08 plus 17.01 times two. And then I'll just add these two numbers together to get the molar mass for calcium hydroxide, CaOH2. So pause and give these two a try. So check your work. If you're having problems, in the description there are links to full videos for each one of these compounds. There's one more type of molar mass we need to learn to calculate, and that's for what's called a hydrate. This is copper 2 sulfate pentahydrate. Penta means five, and the little dot means those five water molecules are around the copper. To calculate the molar mass, we'll first find the molar mass of the copper sulfate, and then we'll find the mass of the water. Once we have those, we'll add the copper sulfate to five times the mass of the water molecule. That's because we have five water molecules. We add this all together, and that's the molar mass for copper 2 sulfate pentahydrate. Pause and try this one. So check your work if you had problems. Look in the description, there are more videos, including one on MGSO4 heptahydrate. This is Dr. B with Molar Mass, and thanks for watching.